Hello and welcome back to another video by me, Foxy Dotail, here in my test world for my Java server, which is going to be starting very soon. It's very exciting and I've got a lot of things to talk about today, uh, which are all about my data pack, which are going to be included on the server. And uh, you might not be interested because you might think, well, I'm not playing on the server, but I am going to be releasing this data pack to the public, so you're all going to be able to use it for free. Hurrah! And I'm not going to talk about the creeper in the room. That's, uh, that's something else. Today we're talking about custom recipes and ignore these ones. We're going down this big long corridor of recipes and it's taken me ages to sort all this out. We're going to start off with recipes that I've changed from the vanilla version of the game. So on this side we can see that, for instance, to create a light blue wool, you would use a white wool with a light blue dye and you get one for one, which isn't very good because it costs you a lot of dye. So what I've done is I've made it so you can use any color wool, including white, around one dye like that to get your color dye. So it doesn't matter, you can mix and match. For instance, let me grab some different colors and let's say we put half of it red like that and the other half white like that, we can then chuck our blue dye in the middle and we can get our light blue wool. So it's much better and it fits in with the Minecraft theme more because things like terracotta and glass and everything else have similar th sort of things to this. So I thought it was only fair that we do the same thing with wool. The next thing I've done is I've allowed you to get your wool any color wool again back to white again so if you've dyed it you can use bone meal to get it back white again exactly the same thing and exactly the same thing we can mix and match we can have whatever colors in the crafting table we want at once and then we can put some bone meal in the middle and then we can turn that back to white wool which is great so that's wool and I've also done this so it works with carpets as well so once you've made carpets you can re-dye them other colors so like on this system you would just pop your carpet in random colors around the outside and the dye you want in the middle and to put it back to white again you put bone meal in the middle which is very very nice the next one I've done very similar thing is with stained glass so now you can use again any color of stained glass around a dye to make stained glass the reason I'm using light blue dye around the way by the way is just because you can see it well against the orange of the item frame so you can see here if I do that we can then get the light blue stained glass which is absolutely great I just want to say at this point here that I do know that Hermitcraft have some very similar things going on with their data pack I did get some of my ideas from their data pack but I haven't used their data pack in any way I actually built all of these custom recipes way before before they released their data pack to the public. So I've done this all myself, but yes, some of the ideas are from them because I think they're good ideas. I've not stolen them and I've not copied them and they've released their data pack to the public. So they're obviously happy for other people to use them, but I'm not trying to copy Hermitcraft here. I just want to create a data pack that I think is going to be interesting and fair and makes more sense for the vanilla game. And I'm sure when the developers see a lot of people using these similar sorts of recipes, they're going to probably make changes to the, to the the game anyway. Anyway, let's cut back to the video now. Also, we can use plain glass within this crafting recipe. If we was to put some plain glass in there around the die, you can see that also works as well. So you don't have to use stained glass. You can do any mix of any type of glass as long as it's blocks. And this works with panes too. So we can do this with glass panes. We can recolor them. Uh, I've also done it so we can get normal plain glass back from any type of colored glass. And again, this works with panes as well. And the way we do this is we need a water supply, which is either a bucket or a bottle of water. And then we need some different colored glass blocks. And then if we put them around like this, and again, we can mix and match if we want to. If we put them around a bucket, we will get the bucket back, which is very nice. And if we put them around our potion, we, uh, we don't, but that's fine. So uh, you get your bucket back, so you don't you lose, lose your bucket. So we can clean our glass, which is very nice. The next one is exactly the same, but works for concrete powder as well. So if you've made too much concrete powder of one color, you can then dye it to a different color. For instance, I've got all of this stuff in my inventory here. If I do the same sort of thing, and it works with any color dye, by the way, I'm using blue. We don't have to use blue. We can use anything else. And there we go. We can turn any type of concrete powder into anything else. You can't do it with concrete blocks though. For instance, once I've already wet the concrete and made it into concrete, I can't then change the color of that back to something else. It only works with the powder because I think changing back the colored concrete is a little bit too OP. And the same thing goes for terracotta as well, including the main terracotta, just the plain one. We can mix and match this any type we want in any sort of format around a die. So let's just do that quick on the crafting table and put a yellow in there and we can turn it into yellow. So that's great. And again, we can wash it back to the standard plain terracotta as 
as well with a water source. So if I go to this crafting table here and I put all of this grey terracotta around the outside and the water bucket in the middle, we'll get our terracotta back and our bucket as well. So that's really handy. We can sort out our terracottas and change it different colour. We don't just need this plain boring terracotta that we make from clay. So that's the end of the default crafting recipes that I've changed from Minecraft or if you like the vanilla ones. From this point on these are all completely custom ones and the other thing I just want to add in is that stairs if you use six blocks to make stairs like that, one, two, three, four, five, six, you get six stairs. So it's one for one rather than in vanilla Minecraft, you put six down, I think you only get four stairs. So you get swizzed a little bit on stairs. So I've just made that a little bit more fair. Right, going on to my custom crafting recipes then. We can now turn sand into red sand by using a red die. So if I grab some sand and I grab some dye and I put that in the crafting table and I go around the outside like that and put some rose red in the middle, we can see we get red sand. And the reason for that is because red sand is very rare and it's hard to come across and it's not renewable. And we can also change our red sand back to white sand. And I've also done this with the sandstone as well. Not all the variants, just plain sandstone, but we can, for instance, take our sandstone there and some bone meal. And if we go to our crafting table here, we can put our eight sandstone around the outside and our bone meal in the middle and that will give us eight plain sandstone. The next thing I've done is I've allowed us to be able to get smooth blocks, which if you don't know what smooth blocks, look at these slow stone slabs here. These are actually double stone slabs. Originally in the Minecraft game, there was a bug you could actually exploit to get these blocks, but eventually the developers decided they're actually going to make them a part of the game, but only available in the creative menu. So what I've done is I've allowed us to be able to craft them. So we've got smooth quartz, smooth stone, smooth sandstone, and smooth red sandstone. And if we just look at how these actually look on the ground, I think they're really nice materials. I mean, the quartz looks a little bit like normal quartz, but the smooth sandstone and the smooth stone, I think look really nice. They're gonna make building walls and things like that a lot better. I mean, that would make a really nice sort of like a off-white paint or wallpaper to your wall in your house, which is cool. So that's, I made those craftable just with four slabs of each of the same types of variants. The next thing is something I really don't understand why it isn't in the vanilla game already. Why can't we get cobwebs on a crafting table when we can get string from them? I don't know, but I've made it so we can. So we can literally just craft farm five pieces of string like that, we get one cobweb, which is very nice. And uh, of course we can break that cobweb and get our string back, although I don't think it gives us five. And another thing I've done is to allow us to get string from feathers. One of my patrons messaged me and said, um, can I do something with feathers because you can accumulate a lot of feathers with a chicken farm and there's not really a lot you can do with them other than making arrows. And if you've got a skeleton farm, you really don't need to be making arrows. So a lot of people accumulate feathers. There's not a lot to do with them. So I thought what we could do is use eight feathers around a set of shears to give us 16 string. You do lose the shears, so it's going to cost you two iron and it's cost you a few feathers. And that gives you a reasonable amount of string, which you can then turn into wool or cobwebs or something like that. Now, another one of my patrons, when I shared this idea with everybody, said they thought that was a little bit OP. So anyone watching this video, I'd like to know what you think of that and any of the crafting recipes I've done on here. If you think these are too OP, or uh, but that basically means overpowered, if you think these are going to be too cheaty for a standard survival Java game, let me know. I'd like to know your thoughts because these are what I'm planning on using in our actual survival Java server, just to make the game a little bit, old, little bit different and a little bit more interesting. Right, the next thing is that we can turn any type of wool back into string. If we click on our crafting table and put wool on there, we can get four string for it, and we can do it with any color as well. It doesn't just have to be white wool, we can get the color, the string back from that. And then we come to flint, which is very similar to the feathers in the fact that you can accumulate an absolute ton of it over time, and it's pretty useless other than making arrows, which again, if you've got a skeleton farm, or a skeleton grinder, you really don't need flint. So what I've done is I've allowed us to turn flint into grey dye like that, which is just one for one, which I think is fair. The next thing I've allowed us to do with flint is to be able to create lava buckets. Rather than having to scoop it up from the nether, we can now have a renewable source of lava. And the way that works is we've got three, three flint across the top, a coal block in the middle, and some iron around the outside in a bucket shape. And let's just see how that works on the crafting table. So a block of coal in the middle, and then three flint across the top. So we, that will give us a lava bucket, which I think I think's fair. I think that's basically saying we've made a bucket, so we've not cheated our iron in. We've got some coal blocks, which is our fuel source, and we're using our flint a little bit like a flint in steel in order to heat up that coal source and create the lava inside our bucket. So I think that's I think that's not too cheaty personally. 
This one here, again, was considered a little bit cheaty by one of my patrons, and I think it's okay, so I want to know your thoughts on this, but basically what it is is fake coal. So if you put one block of coal in the middle and surround that by flint, you get two blocks of coal out. So you're basically doubling up your coal by using eight flint. So what we're saying effectively is eight flint is the equivalent of nine standard coal, which might be considered a little bit little bit OP, I don't know. So uh, maybe we will have to get rid of that one. You let me know in the comments. This next one here I think is really important, and I know we can get name tags by AFK Fishing, but this is going to solve a couple of problems. First of all, it's going to solve us having to do the AFK Fishing, because that's the main reason I do AFK Fishing, is to get the name tags. Of course, the Mending and Enchanted books are a bonus, but we can get those from villagers. But name tags are really important. In the Java edition of Minecraft, if you don't name tag your passive animals, so let's say you've got a chicken farm or a rabbit farm or a cow farm or anything like that, and their animals are not named, then they count towards the passive mob cap, which means that nobody else in the world is going to get any passive mob spawning, which means then if you want to go find some sheep or if you want to go find a horse or a pig or anything like that, they're not going to spawn because people have got farms. So I'm really pushing on my Java server for everybody to use as many name tags as possible and make sure all of their animals that are in their farms are named. So I've made it very cheap in order for us to get name tags and it's basically not six paper and one iron ingot like that. And that is pretty much if you look at the actual item itself, what it looks like, it's a paper tag with some iron around the outside. So we can do that. They're going to be so cheap to make and I, that will just help us keep the passive mob cap free so we, we can all have a fair game and all of us get passive animals. The next ones are a little bit cheaty in my opinion, but I thought they'd be fun to add in. And I want to see how this, how this splits opinions, whether people think this is a good idea or a bad idea. I can't make my mind up on these ones. And this is basically making fake items. So what I've got here is some iron ore and a gold ingot. And if we surround the gold ingot with iron ore like that, so eight pieces of iron ore and one gold ingot, that gives us two gold ore, which we can then get two pieces of gold from. So we get our gold ingot back and another one. So that's effectively saying that eight pieces of iron ore equals two pieces of gold. And the reason I've done ore rather than iron ingots is once we've got an iron farm on the server this is going to give us an infinite supply of gold and I don't want to do that I just want to be able to do it so if you go mining and you get a ton of iron and you're short on gold and let's say you want to build a railway or some powered rails or something you can very expensively convert that iron that you've got into gold and the same thing for emeralds and the same thing for diamonds as well so Let's say you want to go shopping in the shopping area or you need to trade with villagers and you've got tons of iron ore but you've got hardly any emeralds or hardly any diamonds, you'll be able to convert your iron ore into diamonds, emerald and gold. The difference is you get two gold ore but you get one emerald ore and you get one diamond ore which effectively means we could actually get five emeralds and five diamonds from this because if you've got fortune three pickaxe there is a chance you can get five diamonds from it. Sometimes you'll only get one so you won't have achieved anything and sometimes you'll get five. So I don't know if these ones are a little bit OP. The next one I think is going to be good, or at least I did, until they made a change in the game. It was always impossible to get Podzol unless you actually went out in the world and found it, but now you can get it just by planting a spruce tree, and I'm going to show you that quickly. So now, in the 1.13 version of Java, if we plant a spruce tree, and a big one at least, and grow it, the ground underneath it turns into Podzol, which is amazing. So you have got a renewable source of it. And I actually made this crafting recipe before I found that out, but I still think it's gonna be useful because it's gonna save you planting massive trees. And what we've got is sand and coarse dirt. That's not normal dirt, it's coarse dirt and leaves. So it's quite an expensive recipe. We'll give you eight Podzol. So let's just do that. Let's use our coarse dirt in the centers like so, and our sand around the outside, if we could do that like so, and our leaf block in the middle, that's gonna give us eight pods on, which I think I think's a reasonable price. The next one, again, this might be a little bit OP, but why can't we have more sponges in the game? Why are we limited to only getting sponges from the sponge rooms in the Ocean Monuments or the Elder Guardians? So I've decided that if you have eight pieces of yellow wool and one bucket, you can make one sponge. So it's quite expensive, it's gonna cost you eight wool and some yellow dye and a bucket, but well, that's going to give you a sponge, which is great. So now sponges are renewable as well. And then we can actually make the mob heads, which aren't really very important, but they might come in useful. 
by surrounding it with a skull with either rotten flesh or bones or gunpowder in order to get a creeper head, a skeleton head or a zombie head. And the reason that I think that's okay now is because these are pretty easy to get now that we've got tridents with channeling on. We can, we can make charged creepers and we can get these fairly easily. So I don't think that's adding too much to the game really. These ones might be adding too much to the game. The next ones are going a little bit crazy. So let's see what we've got coming up. First of all, tridents. Tridents on the bedrock edition of Minecraft are so easy to get. But on the Java edition, they're very difficult to get, so I've made it easy. One diamond, one blaze rod, and three end rods will give you a trident, which I don't think is a bad price, it's probably a bit cheap. But to be honest, if you've played with tridents, they're pretty rubbish. They're fun to play with, but they're rubbish. They don't do a great deal of damage, and uh, yeah, I, personally, I don't like them very much, so I don't mind them being cheap and easy to get hold of. The next one is the Totem of Undying. Again, something that is so rare because you only get it from Evoker and chances are if you find a Woodland Mansion, they only have normally two Evokers in there anyway. So they're very, very rare, very difficult to get. So I'm saying if you've got a Zombie Head, which we can now get from crafting some Rotten Flesh around a Wither Skull, and three gold blocks and a nether star, so you're still gonna to have to kill the wither, you can then make a totem of undying. So they're not renewable, but very expensive. And the same thing with the ender dragon egg. Why do you only get one ender dragon egg in a whole game? When you play multiplayer, why can only one person have the egg? So I've made it so we can craft a dragon head and it is gonna cost you a nether star, it's gonna cost you a dragon head, and it's gonna cost you seven eyes of ender. So it's not cheap, but we can then all have a dragon egg. And these are gonna come in very handy later on, which we'll see in a minute. And then another thing I've brought back to the game, we always used to be able to create golden apples or enchanted golden apples at least, and they took them out of the game. So I've added them back in. I've made them a little bit more expensive than they were. So before it was eight, eight gold blocks around an apple. Now I've made it a golden apple surrounded by four gold blocks and four diamonds, which I think is reasonable. I did want to surround it with enchanted books or enchanted items, but at the moment, the crafting system or the custom crafting system on the Minecraft data packs is limited to things that don't include enchanted items, so we can't do that. Finally, of the, uh, of the standard stuff that we're showing today, we've got the end portal frame. And if you don't know what these are, these are how you make yourself a portal to the end. And I think these are a good idea because when you're playing Minecraft and you've been playing it for a long time and you're building a lot of stuff in the end and you've got Enderman farms and things like that, it's really annoying if you're miles away from the from the end portal to have to keep going backwards and forwards all the time. So I've made it so if you've got a dragon egg, and you've got some eyes of ender and you've got some end stone you can make one of these now you need 12 of them in order to make your portal so you're going to need 12 dragon eggs which means you're going to need 12 nether stars or you're going to need to kill the dragon 12 times so it's going to be an expensive thing to do but i think it'll be worth it for a lot of people and the way you build these these are pretty tricky to build and it's a one-off go you once you've placed one there's no um yeah you can't pick them up again so if you was to, for instance, just stand in the fa same direction and face round like this, and then put your eyes of enders in, like so, and listen to the music it plays when you do that now, nothing happens, it doesn't work. You have to place them from the inside out. So if I stand like this and place those, then stand like this and place those, then stand like this and place those, then stand like this and place those, and then put my eyes of ender in, I believe, yeah, there we go, it works. So you have to place them from the inside out to get it the right way round. The problem then is, in survival Minecraft, you can't move it. You can break it in creative mode, but you can't break it in survival mode. So you're gonna have to be really sure where you want that before you go ahead and build it. Because if you build it one block off, it's tough. There's no going back. So that's the end of all of the custom items that I've added into the vanilla game, with exception of these last few things here, which also include custom items. And at the moment, there's no easy way to add custom items into the game, so what I've had to do is actually replace some of the standard items in the game. So if I go to the creative menu and type in gold, you can see we've got no golden tools, but we do have golden hose, golden axe, golden pickaxe, and golden shovels, and they've now got these animations. The thing is, what I've had to do in order to make it so we can't just craft these, because these are gonna be really OP, I've had to take the crafting recipes for these golden tools completely out of the game. So you can see that would be a golden shovel, that would be a golden axe, that would be a golden pickaxe, that would be a golden hoe. We can no longer craft the golden tools. There's no way of getting the golden tools now in this data pack. The golden tools are completely gone. But what we've got is better. And the way we get these, we get this, we've got an orb of destiny and we've got an egg of destiny. And the way we get the orb of destiny is 
There's two ways. We can either, by an advancement, kill the Ender Dragon and kill the Wither and kill an Evoker and kill an Elder Guardian and we'll get one of these in our inventory for free. Or once we've killed them and we've got all of these drops, we can craft one as well. So if you go out and you kill all of the bosses, you'll get one. If you then craft the trophies together, you can get another one. So you get two. And you're going to need two for these to be useful. So the first thing you can do is surround one of these with iron bars and that's going to give you a mob spawner cage. You still can't move these, these are still unmovable, you can, even with silk touch you can't move it so once you've placed it, it's stuck. But we can now craft them and then if we use another dragon egg with the orb of destiny we can create an egg of destiny and the egg of destiny is then crafted using various recipes like this into spawn eggs. So in order to get an egg of destiny we need one orb of destiny which means we've got to kill all of the bosses plus a dragon egg which means we need to kill a wither or to craft it using our custom cra custom crafting or we need to kill the ender dragon again and then we can create an egg of destiny and then we need either some gunpowder or some blaze rods or some leather or some pork chops or some bones or all of these different items in order to get a spawn egg so by it's going to be very expensive but basically if you're if you work hard and you kill a loads of bosses and you spend a lot of time you'll be able to make a mob spawner and then you'll be able to turn your Egg of Destiny into a spawn egg, such as a Creeper spawn egg, or a Cow spawn egg, or a Witch, or a, or a Zombie, or a Vindicator, or anything like that. And then when you click your spawn egg onto the spawner, it will then turn it into a mob spawner, which you can then use as a mob grinder or anything like that. I've only added these nine different spawn eggs in. We can't get all of the spawn eggs in the game. We can only get these nine. We didn't want it to be too overpowered. It's already going to be crazy overpowered if people have got like two or three of these in their bases, but they are going to have to do a lot of work to get them. So that's going to be really, really OP when we get to that level of the game, but it's going to open up the game much, much more. It's going to give us better access to resources and it's going to make life more interesting. We're going to see a different side to Minecraft that you don't normally see in the survival game so there we go that is pretty much all of the custom crafting recipes that I have added into the game don't forget I've also done my custom data pack stuff with the mob heads and the special achievements and there's also this crazy creeper thing in the middle here that I'm not going to talk about today but that's something new that I've added and if you're wondering what these houses are in the background that's just me playing around testing what my house might actually look like when we get building it on the server I've been doing some practicing and some testing and seeing what designs I like and we may end up with something like this on the server eventually once I've gathered all the resources so there we go that's it that's that video done i hope you enjoyed it if you did do please leave a like if you haven't already please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one. Oh, and don't forget if you want to come and join into the java server you can just go onto my website and check out the joining details thanks for watching bye